In terms of touristic resources, Uzbekistan is among the top 10 and 15 countries in Central Asia and has a unique tourist potential in the world. There are more than 4,000 unique architectural, historical and natural monuments of different historical periods in the territory of our country. Today, during the expedition across the Tashkent region, the film crew talks about healing springs and centuries-old historical monuments. Let's start with a spring called Korabulok, meaning Black Spring in English, located in the territory of Sana Mahalla of Ahangaran district. Of course, when you hear the name of spring, you might have thought that the water is darker than you think. But it's not like that. The water is crystal pure. The word Kora has another etymological meaning of the word black. In the 60s and 70s of the 20th century, when natural ditches about half a mile above war barrier and the ground were leveled for agricultural use, after which groundwater accumulates and began to flow from here as a major source of water. This place is considered to be the southernmost tributary of the Ahangaran River. From this place, the hills of the Krama Ridge can be seen. This is the point where the Krama Ridge meets the Ahangaran Delta. They afford not only the groundwater of the ancient ditch on the hill, but also the groundwater flowing from the large Ahangara River, which is rushing two kilometers away, flows in this direction and comes out of this slope. And this water is a large basin that supplies water to several farms. Kharabulak means a big spring. The word black means not only color, but also size. There is a village called Karabalik, three miles above. It means a big city. In ancient times, there were a big city there. That is why it is named so. Therefore, it has such name. The color of Karabalik water is not black. It's absolutely pure. Karablok water can be easily drunk even in winter because the temperature is relatively moderate. Its water content increases in summer and decreases in winter. Thanks to the efforts of the villagers, the spring is surrounded by stone. However, local residents say that there is still a lot of work to be done to improve the area around the spring. There are many springs in the areas along the Hungaran River. According to experts, the abundance of spring can be explained by the presence of rivers and other large reservoirs, the mountainous nature of the area, as well as karst process. Now the film crew goes from Ahangaran district to Piskent 1. The next object is the site of Kirkus. Kirkus site meaning Four Maidens is located in the territory of Kultapa Mahalla of Pskent district. The water of the spring here has been scientifically studied and it has been determined that they are rich in minerals.
The site is based on a very popular motif which has long been popular among people telling about 40 girls in Central Asia praying to God to turn them to stone when the enemy comes. There are many legends in Uzbek folklore which retells the story of 40 girls turned to stone when they were attacked. There is a similar legend here. It's believed that these springs are the tears of those girls who did not live to the end of their lives and turned to stone. The springs are rich in calcium carbon that leaks through the limestone layer. Rodium is considered to be a healing water with a low content. Therefore, from April to September, visitors come from Ahangaran district, Ahangaran city, Almalik, Biskin, Buka and other parts of the region. Water flows from about 18 springs and turns into a large river, irrigating the fields of Biskin district. Experts say that each spring is different in terms of mineral composition. Mineral Although the composition of spring water has been scientifically studied, ancient legends about them are still passed down by word of mouth. Accordingly, in ancient times, the inhabitants of this beautiful place at the foot of Mount Babayo were engaged in mining, processing of non-ferrous metal stones making jewelry from gold and silver. The caravans that passing through this mountain of course stopped at the place on the bank of the river, taking stock of the spring water and exchanged the china fabric for silver and gold ornaments. The clear healing water from the spring is saturated with silver, so it does not spoil even if you walk for a month. It's said that the people live it in peace and security. The land was ruled by a generous and just ruler. He had four daughters who were extremely beautiful and well-mannered. Locals wore fabricated legends that 40 princesses turned into 40 shiny silver fish. Now we return from myth to reality, more specifically to research about our distant past. As it was mentioned, the Hungarian River Basin has been one of the cradles of culture since ancient times. Even in pre-Islamic times, towns and villages existed and developed here. The historical object we are now talking about is also believed to date back to that period. <laughs> We are going up Surli Tepa Hill. Archaeologists have carried out extensive excavations here. It was a big ancient city, and now the whole place is covered with thick snow. We are trying to climb the hill.
Sun worship was practiced during the pre-Islamic period of fire. The sun god was praised and various ceremonies were performed. In recent years, a group led by academician Ahmad Ali Askarov has conducted archaeological excavations in the Ahangaran Valley, excavating the ruins of ancient cities such as Surli Tepa, Urali Tepa, Kanka, Tunket, Kavardon, which belong to the Kowanche culture. During the research, archaeological complexes belonging to all three stages of the Kowanche culture were studied. When the first medieval temple was opened in Surlitepa, it was discovered that its upper horizon had been destroyed during the Arab conquest. The discovery of pieces of ash and burned wood in the rooms and corridors of the temple, as well as fragments of clay and pottery that had turned red and brick in the fire, confirmed this idea. <laughs> According to academician Birikov, tons of Lashkara copper and silver coins were transported to Baghdad by camels. The Ahangara region is considered to be uh, very rich in minerals, so it's snow. That's why mining has been going on here since the early Middle Ages. In return, as a result of the loosening of the Samanid state policy, the Karakhanid state led by Arslan Khan took over. The capital of the Karakhanid state was Balasagun on the eastern outskirts of Kyrgyzstan. It was very difficult to manage the land from there. So in 970, the pheasants that were the big feudal lords, the big landowners, declared it as small independent state. Here from 970, under the leadership of Sheikh Jalil Khan, the Ilak state was established. Tonket was declared the capital of the Ilak state. Coins began to be minted in both places. Independently, they minted coins themselves, this all being the Karaganids, the Samanids and Baghdad. That's why the caravans of the Silk Road had to cross this narrow mountain road due to the large amount of gold and silver coins here. <laughs> We are approaching the Shakhristan wall. The outer wall of the city began with a guard house. Here were the markets, here were the residential houses. Inside this high wall lived rulers, judges and, and other officials. There were schools and madrasas. Right at this place, the excavation was carried out in May-September under the leadership of academician Ahmad al Askarov, with the support of the local population and his students. A huge cultural statum of different centuries was discovered here, and the finds were taken to the Institute of History and Archaeology of the Academy of Sciences of the Republic of Uzbekistan for scientific study. Uzbekistan Fanlar Akademi the ruins of this city were later called by the locals Suritepa, Suritepa, and other similar names. However, it's still unknown what it is actually called. That means that scientific research in the region needs to be continued. Behind me, this wall is the beginning of Kohandis or Shahristan. Its height is 12 meters. We do not know exactly how high it was in ancient times. Now, if we go upstairs, you can see for yourself how majestic it is. The locals call this place Suritepa. Some people call it Suritepa. Now let's go to the top of this hill. Here we lies a rare piece of our history. Once upon a time, life was rushing here. 
but over the centuries many tragic events have left it in ruins. After archaeological excavations carried out here, the remains of ancient structures have been plastered on top of them so that they do not disappear under the influence of wind, rain and snow. This is one way to keep them. That is the culture layer. It was deliberately plastered. You see, there is a film in between. This new fold was done recently, two months ago. It serves as a cover. This is a real archaeological stretcher. As it was mentioned, the Suyulitipa archaeological monument has not yet been fully explored. So new research and discoveries await our scientists here as well. After completing the filming of the ancient object, the film group turns back and meets Kukari Race on the way and decides to film it as well. 